Hello Year 10 and welcome to this week's additional biology lesson to make sure that you are covering enough content for the biology for triple scientists rather than um, what everybody else in year 10 is doing which is just the uh, biology for double scientists. So this is an additional lesson that you need to study this week and it is uh, B13.5 which is on pages 204 and 205 of the biology textbook on Caboodle and it's entitled DNA structure and protein synthesis and what you need to be able to do during this lesson or after this lesson is to be able to explain how the structure of DNA relates to its function and to be able to link the structure of DNA to protein synthesis. So the structure of DNA that we have looked at so far involves us talking about the double helix structure. So what I want you to consider now is that if we go in higher magnification to look at that double helix structure, what you would see is that the sides of the ladder that you would hold on if you were um, climbing the ladder are here and these are made up of the phosphate group and the sugar group so in this case with um, DNA this would be deoxyribose okay um, and these two are joined together along with what's called a nitrogenous base and these bases are there are only four different possibilities of what they could be and their names are guanine, cytosine, adenine and thymine. And as you can see, each of these nucleotides makes up a repeating unit. So DNA is a polymer. And each of those repeating units might have the same um, base pair um, or they may have a different base pair um, so you can get any combination of gene genes in this order but when they join up as the rungs of the ladder across to the other side g will always combine with c so guanine and cytosine are a complementary base pair and adenine and thymine are a complementary base pair they can never combine in any other combinations. So the order across in this way, up and down the ladder, doesn't matter, can be different and will be different as you'll see in protein synthesis. But when they're joining across the ladder to make that double helix structure, they have to join with their complementary base pair. That word is up here, complementary. And complementary in this case means that they fit together, they have a complementary shape so that they do bond together. If you are if you give somebody a complement, then that is spelt with an I here instead of an E, so it's a different word. So this diagram looks complicated, but we're going to work our way through it and hopefully it will make sense to you. So we're going to start, this purple section of the picture here represents the nucleus. And as we know, the DNA is found in the nucleus. And we know that the DNA holds the code for making molecules in the cell. So to be specific, it holds the code for making proteins. And because many proteins are enzymes and hormones, they can then be used to help support the body in making other molecules where needed. But the DNA only codes to make proteins. Now, the DNA is a very, very large molecule, as we saw when looking at the chromosomes. And so in order to be able to use the template, and in order for the proteins to be made by the ribosomes, which are actually found in the cytoplasm, a section of that template needs to be copied and taken out of the nucleus. So this is done with a similar chemical called RNA. Now RNA is ribonucleic acid, so it's made with ribose sugar um, instead of deoxyribose. Um, it's also a single strand as opposed to the double helix of DNA. So this RNA makes a copy of that template. And because it's only making a copy of a, a section, a single gene at a time, that molecule is then small enough 
to come out through these pores in the nuclear membrane, here's one here, and to come out into the cytoplasm. So although this is drawn as one great big long strand of RNA, um, it could well be completely out into the cytoplasm while it's being created. So we are now at stage three, and it's telling you that messenger RNA, which is it, this uh, official name, is it's a messenger, so mRNA, has codons, and we'll see what that means in a moment. The messenger RNA moves into the cytoplasm and becomes associated with ribosomes, represented by these red shapes here. We come around further, and in your curriculum, um, this molecule, tRNA, another form of RNA called transfer RNA, you only need to refer to it as a carrier molecule if you wish, but officially it's called tRNA or transfer RNA. This carries the amino acid um, to the messenger RNA. Now this is where the codon and the anticodon are important. The codons are sets of three individual bases which are next to each other on the DNA strand. So let's, for example, say G, T, C, all in a row next to each other on that ladder. So the messenger RNA has made a complementary copy of that and has come out into the cytoplasm. The tRNA has got the complementary code once again associated with any particular amino acid. So our GTC codon, our set of three letters, codes for only one type of amino acid. And so only the right tRNA molecule or, or carrier molecule can bring the right amino acid that matches the three bases on the messenger RNA to bring them in line to be the next amino acid to join the chain. And what happens is, as the ribosome moves along the chain, it reads the next three bases. A different tRNA molecule will come along with its amino acid and sit next to it. And gradually, amino acids will be sitting next to each other. And because those amino acids um, choose to, uh, their preferences to join up into a big molecule, they will form peptide bonds between them. And so all that the DNA is doing is bringing the right amino acids into the right order to grow, uh, to grow this chain, for this chain to join. Now, all of the amino acids in this picture are represented by these blue circles. However, they are all, or they can all be different to each other. So you could have two amino acids that are the same next to each other, but it's just as likely that you will have many different amino acids in that chain. They all join up together to make the protein. When the um, tRNA has delivered its um, amino acid and that has joined into the protein molecule, then that tRNA can go away and find another amino acid, which will be the same as the previous one that matches with its complementary um, codon. The um, ribosome, once the ribosome has traveled all the way along the messenger RNA molecule and has created the whole of the polypeptide chain, which is the chain of amino acids that make one protein, that ribosome can then detach itself and go and find another messenger RNA and do the same job again. The protein is then free and that protein may fold up and become an enzyme or it might become a molecule that makes part of a membrane um, or it might be packaged into being a hormone and be secreted from the cell. So proteins have lots and lots of different jobs, okay? But it is only proteins that are made by the DNA or are coded for by the DNA and put together by the ribosomes. This picture shows the tRNA molecule and the idea that each different tRNA is bringing in a different amino acid. So the tRNA molecules all look quite similar to each other, but the anticodon that they have on here has to match up to the codon 
that is on the messenger RNA, which remember was a, a complementary copy from the DNA. When the amino acids get near to each other because they're brought in by the um, different tRNA molecules, they join together to make the growing protein chain. I'm just going to point out something to you on here, which is that we've got some U's in our bases. When DNA is produced, we have the bases guanine, cytosine, adenine and thymine. But RNA uses a very diff uh, slightly different code. Three of the bases remain the same, guanine, cytosine and adenine. But instead of using thymine, RNA uses uracil. And so uracil replaces the thymine. That is more detail than you are likely to need at GCSE, but as it's on this picture, I thought I would share it with you. So the key points then from the learning that I've taken you through today are that DNA is made of alternating sugar and phosphate sections and that attached to each sugar is one of four bases, adenine, cytosine, guanine or thymine, and that they will always link in the same pairs. So cytosine will always link with guanine, thymine will always link with adenine. And I'll just add in there that if it is RNA being considered, that the, thyme, the adenine would join with uracil instead of thymine. A sequence of three bases will be the code for one particular amino acid and it's that order of bases which control what order the amino acids are put together in to make a particular protein. So you can now begin to link the structure of the DNA to its function because you can see that the great big long chain of, of bases made up in a very particular order is what is going to produce the many, many, many different types of protein that can be used to structurally build cells, as enzyme to catalyze reactions, as hormones, as chemical messengers. So um, all of those different instructions are produced and used in exactly the same way as the um, process we've spoken about today. So the proteins are synthesized according to a template and when the protein chain is finished it will fold up into a unique shape and that shape will be related to the function that that particular protein needs to carry out. So that's quite a lot of new information to take in and most importantly I want you to either listen to that again or read over the information in pages 204 and 205 on the textbook or use some additional research to make sure you understand that. So I'm only giving you um, one six mark answer question to answer from this again. Um, and that question is explain how the DNA controls the synthesis of proteins in a cell. And essentially what that question is asking you to do is to describe in your own words what happens for proteins to be produced from the DNA code. Um, if you need any support, please, of course, get in touch um, and uh, I look forward to receiving your work. Take care. Bye bye.